welcome to Dot Eight Lovelace. I'm gonna Hello. introduce you. <laughs> Ellen Oakley is um, application security architect at SAP. She's a cybersecurity enthusiast, a researcher, and educator. Currently working on her own cybersecurity research project and strongly believes in giving back to the community. Helen is a co-founder of LeadingCyberLadies.com, a global professional network of women in cybersecurity, teaching, teaching kids to ethical hacking as part of a non-profit organization called HackedStudent.com, and she's an advisory board for CyberX.org. You can follow Helen on her Twitter, at E2HLN. Welcome, Helen. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. And good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, uh, cybersecurity enthusiasts and um, those who are eager to learn a little bit more about hacking. So shall I start sharing my screen? I have a little presentation today and maybe even a little demo. <laughs> so, all right. You should be able to see my screen by now. Good, good. Um, thank you. And thank you for such a wonderful introduction. Um, yeah, just briefly, I work for SAP as product security architect. And uh, like anybody else um, um, who are working right now, not anybody, but um, a lot of actually cybersecurity experts didn't come from cybersecurity. So, the, so I didn't come from cybersecurity initially. I started... Um, in completely different field and I re-educated um, and I grew in, into my career. So if you'd like to <laughs> know more about how I reached into my uh, position today, don't hesitate, reach out to me. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, so just ask questions, I can give you advice. And this is part of uh, the co-founding Leading Cyber Ladies um, organization that I'm running with Karen Lazari and other leaders across um, the globe, we support women in cybersecurity, we help them to um, network, to be educated, to bridge this gender gap and um, build each other in this vibrant field. So if you're interested, also join us. We have sessions, we have great community, and this is where I also um, a mentor uh, women and not only women, I mentor everybody actually um, to help them because we have definitely a shortage of cybersecurity experts. Um, I like teaching kids. I think new generation, the growing generation, the next one is very important, the workforce in cybersecurity and we have to uh, recognize that and teach them from the start. Um, we have a lot of great talent and kids are so smart today, so advanced in technology already. So for them, um, grabs the concepts of hacking is so easy. And yeah, the last but not least, um, I'm enjoying and uh, enjoying being advisory board member at a couple of uh, security organizations, um, uh, and startups, uh, where we also grow community and um, working on different interesting projects like cyber exchange uh, and um, and so on. So join me, follow me, uh, get in touch with me. I'm very open. Um, so don't hesitate and ask questions. But right now, I'm going to ask you a question. And of course, you don't have to respond right now. You can text me later. But how would you defend your organization? What are you thinking right now? You know, some of you might think, um, you know, uh, maybe I will get a security solution from uh, Snake Oil Enterprises or something like that. Um, and you start thinking about all these different tools and all the different um, components that might help you and maybe they will, right? But what if I ask you, how would you hack your organization? Would you think about the tools? Well, maybe you would if you know a little bit about them. But, you know, maybe you will start thinking, huh, I know my office. I know during the lunch, um, security guard goes to a lunch break and I know the receptionist is alone and I could potentially pass by, you know, if I pretend I'm a delivery person or somebody. Um, and, but hold on, what's happening now? What are you thinking about? 
you are enumerating vulnerabilities. You are getting yourself into a hacker mindset, right? Isn't it amazing? You're thinking from the other side. So what is hacker mindset? Who are the hackers? Hackers can be anyone. I mean, anyone, right? We are looking, don't be deceived by how people look and what they pretend to be. Hackers can be anyone. So, and you can expect them to come from any angle, anywhere you don't expect them to come from, they will, right? And we have so many examples of hacks that come in through, um, like in the past years, um, it's not gonna stop, right? So when I tell you to get into a hacker mindset, what do I ask you to do? Do I ask you to do something bad? Do I ask you to go and hack some organization? No, no, no. <laughs> Hacking without uh, authorization is illegal, right? It's a criminal offense. So definitely don't do that. Um, so why I teach hacking? For example, I teach kids to hack, to channel their creativity um, into the right direction because hacking um, is creative. Yes, um, it's something that you need to figure out. It's something you need to do. And people, there are a lot of people who are creative. So in order to channel that creativity, we teach them to hack. We teach them ethical hackers, ethical hacking, right? Not all hacking is bad. But there are different hats, there are criminals, uh, threat actors, we call them, the black hats or um, attackers, right? There are many uh, different names for them. Um, those are criminals. But we have then white hats, red teamers, um, ethical hackers, those who hacked in order to uh, uncover the flaws in our systems and in our infrastructure. And it's actually hacking, uh, hacking can be not just the infrastructure, it can be also hacking people, right? So that's, we have social engineering. So I am getting you into ethical mindset, ethical hacking mindset, not just any hacking mindset. And why do I want you to learn to hack? Well, because I believe that this is the only way we can rebuild cybersecurity. Because not understanding hacking actually creates a paralyzing fear of cybersecurity. Because you cannot understand the defense if you cannot understand the offense. So rather than being immobilized, let's embrace it. Let's enjoy and learn hacking so that we can defend our systems better. And Without any further ado, so what is hacking? Like I said, hacking is making something or someone, yeah, we're talking about people too. Um, and actually that's uh, many consider as a weak element um, in the um, in the security, cybersecurity chain is the human element. So we making, by hacking, we're making something or someone do something that is not intended to do. So we are, fooling the system around, or we are making humans to um, give the information they're not supposed to give, or let us give us an access, uh, let us pass the receptionist, right? Let us pass or, or so on and so on. And hackers, um, hackers, uh, um, something they're good at is the failure. <laughs> That's funny because uh, usually we are looking at failure um, from different angles. Um, I like looking at failure as a lesson, right? Um, and it's a good way to look at the failure. Don't be um, um, br brought down by the failure. But when we talk about hackers, they actually, failure energizes them. Yes, because we are, um, we are being creative through failure. It makes us keep going, pushing boundaries um, and just trying to tinker uh, the boundaries of the system we tinker with. So we embrace failure. It's like, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm curious. Okay, so uh, let's see what else works, right? And that brings me to the second trait of hackers is curiosity. 
So if you have this two, if you're curious how the system works and failure doesn't stop you, and you're curious, you have a high chance to be a good hacker. <laughs> so curiosity is, um, is something, um, it's a great trait uh, of hackers because um, understanding the limits of the technology, right, uh, that you're trying to hack, um, the curiosity for that, um, to see the boundary of what is possible, to make something to do what it's not intended to do, right? So that's hacking. And we motivated by it, we motivated by curiosity. Okay, so we have um, attack kill chain. Every hack um, comes with the planning and whether or not there is a chain of events. We are talking about, we can talk about different um, types of um, hacks. Um, it could be a big hack like a solar winds, yeah, or 10 years back, Stuxnet, yeah. Um, or it can be something small as um, script kit is um, trying to play with the website and deploying some scripts. Uh, they might not really, they don't really know what they're doing, but still it's, it's, it is uh, in a way an exploit that they're playing. Anyway, with um, different hacking techniques that are used uh, for different purposes throughout the kill attack chain. And in example of solar winds, um, I think, and it's not just my opinion, it's general researchers' opinion as well, that there is a, a big team behind it. Uh, there is a big group behind it, right? Who have different techniques, different tools. They have researchers, they have planners, they have QA, right? Because you have only one shot. You have one shot to deploy that, um, that code injection in case of, uh, in case of uh, solar winds. So you do need to understand what you're doing um, in order to be successful. So you plan your event, uh, you plan your hack, and when you're thinking um, about it uh, from the hacker perspective, from a attacker perspective, um, you need to, first of all, do the research, right? You do the research, which we call reconnaissance, um, we gathering information, and that's the longest, longest stage in the, res uh, in the whole attack chain. Well, um, let's maybe take a look a little bit at Stuxnet just to kind of map this kill attack chain uh, to understand uh, a, a glimpse of what happened. So based on the released uh, information that we can find about this attack is that the attackers deployed the code sometime in September 2019. So there is uh, interesting, yeah, step four, attackers uh, start accessing the solar, and that's where the timeline starts. What we don't know in many cases is the stage of reconnaissance and how much actually information is out there. It's a whole separate field in cybersecurity uh, where you look for different information and you collect that information. And then based on that, you start exploiting your targets, right? So if you Again, map to the, at the attack kill chain, we have the code injection. That's already the delivery, right, of the exploit. And, and then we have the exploitation and at the end, um, well, at the end to summarize, um, they've been quite successful in their, uh, in their attacks. So it's nine, um, it's still ongoing, by the way. It's uh, the whole investigation it hasn't finished, of course. Um, but so far, we have nine government agencies compromised. Yeah, we have 17,000 of uh, customers affected. Um, and uh, this attack can be broken down into two, um, two stages in a way. Um, so hacking the, the build process, right, where they injected the code. And then they're having a list of all customers. So they have all the customers who were involved there, who, who were connected. And based on that, they plan their further attacks, such as still corporate crown jewels like keys or targeting documents, emails, um, you know, source code and tools and everything else. So um, there is a lot. And like I said, there are different techniques. So let me um, 
let me go a little bit deeper into reconnaissance. So I like reconnaissance because like I said, there is a lot of information on the internet and this is what we don't know how they collect this information attackers. And there, I will show you today an example how to find information and how easy actually to uncover certain things that um, we forgot to configure in our system or we maybe save something in the wrong place, who knows, right? Um, so now a little background, reconnaissance has uh, two stages or two types, active and passive. During the stages, um, what we are doing usually um, based on open source, uh, so it's part of OSINT, right? Open source intelligence. Um, so we're looking for information that is out there in the internet. Yeah, we don't need to break in, we don't need to do stuff, we're just looking for everything that's on the internet. And that includes uh, like mining information about domains, yeah, like email servers, also VPN servers, um, subdomains, and everything that comes along. F fingerprinting, well, web application firewalls, and what type of firewalls, because from there we can also understand what tools we can use on certain systems. Um, then you know, Spider, the host for API endpoints, um, API endpoints, um, director listing, information disclosure, like GitHub, um, you name it. So there's a lot of activities that can be done. And a few of the tools that I wanted to mention. So we have Google Dorks for passive uh, reconnaissance. Uh, passive is when we just looking at information, we are not touching. Active is when we start scanning information, yeah? So for Passive, we have Dorks, uh, we have um, Maltiga, we have Harvester, and there are other tools as well. Uh, some of the tools are paid, um, some are more free, um, but there's a lot of information that you can see. And let me show you briefly. So I am opening a Google, and here uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of Google Dorks. So for example, if I am going to, in Google Dorks, usually, what is Google Dorks? <laughs> um, or, you know, Google hacks, uh, sometimes you call them. Um, it's not that you hack in Google, it's just using very specific queries that we don't usually use for uh, finding information. Usually we, we find something just uh, by typing in, but with Google Dorks, we have, um, specific um, in URL. Okay, so I wanna find admin login ASPX. So here, oh, what I have is in URL, I'm looking for all URLs that have admin and login. So I want to find some admin pages to log in, which I can then see if I can play around. And by looking through this, you already see that a lot of stuff is coming up. Just a brief opening one of the pages and I'm at someone's login page, right? And actually it's unsecure even, right? So I have a lot of things that I can do with these pages. Um, I can use uh, different intercepting tools like Zap or Burp Suite to see what can be done. I can try to um, log in to see if it has uh, <laughs> default passwords. Uh, and what's interesting about default passwords. So aside of Google Docs, um, no, let me um, actually, there is another interesting one I wanted to show you as well. So again, in URL, because I'm, um, um, no, actually I'm gonna do file type. File type um, PDF. Yeah, I'm looking for PDF. Um, and then I wanna go to site um, that mil, so military. Yeah, any sites that uh, finishes, finish um, like for military purpose um, by government. And I'm looking for files that have top secret oh <laughs> well 
just by looking at snapshots, I hope none of that is actually a top secret. <laughs> but you can tell that there is a lot of information that is just hanging out there. And it's open in the wild for attackers to look at. And if they have specific target, they can, um, they can collect this information and use it to, um, to plan for further attacks. Um, another thing, uh, so another option, um, what I'm looking at um, actually, exploit, um, exploitdb.com. All right, open source tool has a lot of um, a lot of exploits, like you can say by exploit DB. So it has actually confirmed exploits um, and unconfirmed as well, something new. Um, and here you have also Google dorks, you have actual exploits for different um, technology, different libraries and so on. Um, but let's go again to Google dorks. And here I'm gonna go category, um, something files containing passwords yeah and let's say db pass all right um so let's say this one so here is the google dork that already ready for you to use or not for you maybe for attackers to use to find any database or like all database and wordpress database that uh, exposes the password. So I can click on this link already, it links me to the search. It's convenient, right? And here I have, um, I have all the results for um, pages that would ex exploit, um, ex expose the um, user and password. I'm not gonna open it here. I'm not gonna do it on the <laughs> recording, but Trust me, there are actually usernames and passwords out there. So it's not something that is a secret. And maybe one more thing about open source. So we can, we can inject code, we can use um, open source as part of a supply chain, right? You can call vulnerability where we have different components in, included. Let's say I want to um, find um, I want to find WordPress, uh, WordPress, okay, sorry. <laughs> Here you go, popular plugins. What are the most popular plugins? So you can look at the website and you will see the list of all kinds of plugins. Um, how secure they are, I'm not sure. So let's find out if um, I can see uh, something in the plugin. So I'm gonna go back here and now I'm gonna remove the quick search, but I wanna find uh, a different category in here. I will look for something juicy. Yeah, something real and Twitter, let's, Go Twitter. Here, again, we have different uh, different vulnerabilities, and this vulnerability um, is that they actually the access token is stolen with this plugin. Unfortunately, still many websites using this plugin in WordPress site. So, so it's a gadget. Um, if you search for it, it's a gadget that shows your feed. Um, here, um, premium WordPress plugin. So it, it looks something like this. Um, you, it, it's a company, for example, they have a Twitter feed and they go through, um, go through the Twitter feed and um, they just share everything out of the website and it's there. Again, I can go here, right? Uh, very convenient, and I will see all the websites that have that plugin in, in use. So information is out there, and unfortunately, it can be used um, 
vary uh, in many different ways. So I know the time a little bit um, uh, a little bit pressing, but I'm a last session. I hope uh, it's um, it's fun enough for you, so you can stick around for a little bit more, um, and I will walk you through uh, a few more details. Uh, active reconnaissance has um, has our set of tools, and like I said, it's a little bit uh, more um, invasive in terms of because it starts scanning and some intrusion detection systems um, um, or, or even firewalls can start detecting that something is going on on the network. Um, and um, so usually this has to be by attackers um, uh, used with caution. About um, different types of attacks. So we talk about um, solar wind a little bit. And here is uh, one of the older ones, but the lawsuits are still ongoing. So this saga hasn't finished yet uh, for Fortnite. Uh, if any of you or if any of you have kids, uh, you might know what Fortnite is. Um, so here, Fortnite Epic Games had a vulnerability on the website. And vulnerability was on the login page. Um, XSS vulnerability led to, um, um, actually led to a loss of um, leakage of accounts. So about two... 100 million accounts worldwide were stolen with password and in-game currency. Um, and so what happened here? Users would be uh, redirected uh, from Epic Games' main login page to an old unsecure Epic um, page um, where authentication tokens were stolen um, through the injected JavaScript code. So what is, ja uh, what is XSS, so cross-site scripting vulnerability? Um, Again, it's it's a whole different topic, and um, we can go really deep into uh, how it works. But um, how it works uh, in maybe a couple sentences that the attacker uh, will inject the code, um, such as like malicious JavaScript, um, and into the um, some output of an online application. In this case, um, it's a login page uh, of this Fortnite Epic Games, um, and yeah, and there are many many places um, that can be done, many input fields, um, search like comments, right? And many, many different options uh, where this can be done. Uh, so, but the difference between, let's say SQL injection, if you've heard about those, um, that in this case, the attackers um, target uh, the users, the end users rather than the system. When in, uh, when in SQL injection, they try to um, exfiltrate the data or manipulate with the data. But when with um, cross subscriptive uh, uh, attacks, they usually try to steal information, um, like sensitive information, like talk, um, passwords, usernames, um, and sometimes even credit card data. Um, and it's one of the top 10 uh, vulnerabilities in OWASP still. Um, it's very popular. And speaking of that, how so how do we test it? We have many uh, different testing techniques, um, how to test our applications. And here is an example. I, when I say, I want you to learn to hack, why you should learn to hack um, is because there are many um, testing, there are many testing um, uh, instances and um, um, tools such as here in my open source example toolbox that you can use to learn. So those are learning materials. Juicebox um, has uh, different challenges like XSS, SQL injection, uh, where you can learn to hack, to understand how it works, right? And how you can defend your system, how you can prevent your system. And just basically understand even for yourself um, how how attackers manipulate and what you as a person need to look for when you're clicking on a link, right? And it navigates you somewhere or when you enter data, what happens? Um, and another good one, if you wanna learn to hack and I do encourage you to learn is hack the box. Check this out and see there are also many different challenges. Um, no matter uh, what area you like, you like um, the web application or you like the network, uh, it has it all. So definitely check it out. 
Um, I'm not promoting anybody today, so <laughs> I'm just sharing um, the resources. So you have opportunity to learn safely because it's important that you cannot just test any, you cannot just hack any uh, website, but they are dedicated testing um, resources that you can use to do so. Um, and the further chain, attack chain. So we have an, uh, weaponization, delivery exploitation, right? Uh, so here uh, in um, solar winds, uh, it was um, it was the code injection in the in the attack, right? Um, for example, in Stuxnet, um, the delivery. Um, as an example, if you remember Stuxnet, <laughs> um, it was uh, most likely uh, phishing and USB. Yeah, so USB malicious code was um, uh, deployed and uh, it was propagated um, uh, laterally across the systems. Also, we have uh, following with installation, command and control, and actions and objective. So um, at the end, if you are an attacker, you want to obfuscate, you want to cover your footprints, remove all footprints, and just... Um, um, like make it seem like you weren't there. If you are an ethical hacker and you are testing someone's systems with authorization, of course, the last step will be the report, the findings, uh, and making sure that everything is documented. Yeah, so you start with plan, you go through your scope, your test, you plan for it, um, and at the end, you provide information. So that's the our attack kill chain. We went through that and we look at different uh, different ways, um, uh, different options, how systems can be hacked. And without learning it, you really cannot um, understand the defense, right? And I like this uh, quote by Karen, um, who is a, a founder of Leading Cyber Ladies in Israel. Uh, she, she says that hackers show us what's possible. Right, and they force us to evolve. SolarWinds is a perfect example. Uh, we knew about supply chain attacks, but it's a very good example that forces us to evolve. Um, and we, if we learn hacking and we found find these um, vulnerabilities, we will also in evolve, and our systems will become more protected. And hooray to bug bounties um, because they are, like also Karen says. <laughs> our immune system, right? Okay, so everything is possible, of course, if you can code, but uh, don't be discouraged if you cannot. Uh, there are other options, there are other ways that you can learn. So first of all, um, how to learn to hack? Learn a little bit about technology, curiosity, right? How things work. Uh, watch that video, read a little article um, or someone's blog, read some documentation and learn a little bit more about technology because um, by learning it, you will understand its flaws and how it can break. And this is how we learn to hack as well. Research exploits, examples like SolarWind, Stuxnet, Fortnite, many, many more, right? Research, what really happened? Not just news like, oh, it's happened, right? Oh, many people, um, data got leaked and stolen and so on. Uh, but actually look for research of um, the kill attack chain, right? So how it happened, wh what are the details? And try to understand in order to um, understand how it can be exploited, uh, how other systems can be exploited potentially. What are the flaws? learn safely like i showed you the toolbox of um, some open source tools there are sandboxes there are environments um learn learn using them play ctf it's a very good way to learn the hacking and definitely join communities i'm very glad that lovelace has this conference for this wonderful community and Join this and join other communities. There are so many people and cybersecurity network is big and small at the same time. And many people are open to share their, um, share their knowledge and talk to you if you need a, a hint, if you need a tip or, or you maybe you want to be invited to some meetup, um, definitely use that opportunity. And last but not less and not least, <laughs> 
implement the measures, what you've learned. Um, if you are uh, working on, on a project, see how you can improve that security because we need everybody. Um, it's everyone's responsibility. We need everybody to learn and to understand and um, raise those flaws and make sure they're fixed and implemented and so on. But of course, um, your organization will have to give you authority if you want to hack something, if you want to test something. Uh, but if you know that certain technology might be vulnerable, there are vulnerability databases and there are many different um, uh, resources that you can look through um, that you need to fix it, then do the, uh, address those measures and use your knowledge to make the world more secure. So with that, I encourage you, let's make the world, world safer from cybersecurity by learning how to hack so that we understand. Uh, you can follow me on different social media. You can reach out to me and um, hopefully I will talk to you soon. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask now. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm out without a video. Here I am. Thank you so much, Helen. So interesting. <laughs> uh, we actually have a question here. Uh, what challenges do you think we will face when we educate the new generations in abilities and um, in cybersecurity? Well, the challenges that um, I saw, well, of course, many don't have even um, background of technology in order to understand a little bit hacking. So what I've learned uh, when we have hacking workshops, we have to start with the basics. So unfortunately, schools uh, don't provide a lot of information on background and technology. You have to start with basics. You have to explain how uh, web application works, right? What does it mean hacking? And I really wish uh, kids were introduced to technology, um, how it works, um, earlier, right? Because they have ability to understand the concept. Um, it's just not enough uh, resources at schools to provide that. Um, and another challenge I see is that still um, we invite everybody to our workshops, but not everyone uh, joining because they don't know, they don't understand that it's for them, especially when we talk about girls, right? Uh, when we talk about them, um, I remember coming to one of the schools uh, here in Toronto area, and um, I it was a career fair, and I presented that I was in cybersecurity, and it was so exciting, and it was such a great and uh, and and motivated uh, and vibrant field, and the girls were sitting like I had no idea that this was even a possibility, and I of course remembered myself as well. I I didn't know it was possible when I was growing up. Uh, but it's such a wonderful feel. So I wish um, there was more uh, awareness about cybersecurity, about tech field, that it's not just for boys, it's for everybody. And women are really good at it as well. So that's the challenge I see. The first of all, not enough um, background in technology uh, education. And the second is uh, there's still a lot of silos and um, bias <laughs> uh, when we talk about um who is this work is for? <laughs> yes. I have another question. What do you think we can do to shorten the breach um, of women in cybersecurity? To have more women on board in cybersecurity? Lend a hand. Yeah, so lend a hand to someone who is uh, trying to get into the field. Show by your own role model or be an ally. Um, encourage women to join because um, I often hear, oh, I, I, I don't know, it's not for me. Uh, I either like I, I'm it's too geeky or <laughs> anything else. Uh, sometimes um, they don't feel comfortable because they are intimidated by the full group of men that's sitting in a in a in a room or meeting room or at work, right? So I would say uh, encourage them by lending your hand. So if somebody reaches out to me, um, I definitely reach out back. Um, I definitely let another woman speak and shine at work, right? Because it's not um, a person world. It's it's a community and we build security on a community basis. 
Uh, and definitely uh, raising more awareness through different meetups, sessions, you know, go to school for a workshop, cardio workshop, talk about it. Uh, definitely um, awareness is a big thing. And if uh, there is uh, something happening at community um, at, at work, I always try to bring up a different perspective and be a role model to encourage more women to join the field. Great. And lastly, are you pro uh, the use of uh, governmental malware? Am I what? I'm sorry. Are, are you for that? You Would you approve using governmental where, malware? Um, <laughs> I, I can. Or are you against it? <laughs> malware? Malware, malware. That's what they wrote. I, well, um, first of all, I, I cannot comment on government uh, malware. Um, I, I, when you're talking malware, it's uh, I'm assuming it's something malicious, right? It's malicious yeah, I do software. so too. <laughs> I'm not really sure. So if <laughs> you're talking have about... Um, <laughs> I'd have to uh, uh, go a little bit more into detail here. Um, I guess it's when the government can you know, do things to discover stuff, not to be bad, obviously. I guess yeah, it, it's it's probably other. something like monitoring, right, or, or collection of certain data. Um, I would think <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> I don't have uh, really pros or cons on that. Um, it's um, every different governments have different um, things they do. Um, <laughs> there is... Um, I, and I'm not a malware uh, person, by the way. I'm a product security architect. I'm on application level. Oh, no, so. no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. I know you're not. <laughs> no, it was just because I guess these things exist. And, and it was just a question as to, you know. Yeah, what, it's, it's a fair question. Definitely. It's a, If it's, you know, something that can be used in some situations, maybe for good, obviously not for bad. <laughs> from, from my I perspective, uh, how I stand, regardless if it's government or not, I always you go with the concept of um, using less, giving out less, right? And keep it to minimum. So um, don't create account if it's not needed. Uh, don't download that app if you don't really need it, right? Um, and don't share your information unless it's absolutely necessary. So um, that's what I try to do. I've been doing that always before, even before I was in cybersecurity field. Um, and now I definitely uh, try to avoid um, sharing extra information than needed. Okay, he wrote here, it's the sale of malware box, anything that the companies do like hacking team, gamma group, etc. I'm not an expert in this. I'm not. Um, I'm not. A, I don't know uh, because uh, maybe there is something specific in your area, right, with your uh, country that you know. Um, there are different tools that can be used for um, hacking. But again, um, you can search up uh, like open source tools that are possible. Um, you just have to use them in a safe way, in a safe manner. So yeah. you don't hack a website, go to a sandbox and do, do it on a testing system, regardless of the tool you use. Yes, yes, yes. That sounds very... Well, we, we, we surely hope... Um, I don't think we have any more questions. I'm just going to check one last time here if anybody has questions. No, I don't see any more questions. Well, thank you so much. It's been really, really interesting uh, to hear you and... Um, we definitely hope to see you down here at some point. We had Karen Alessari last year in for 8.8, 8, obviously virtually too. We'd, we'd like to see you here sometime. It'd be great. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And I'm happy that uh, you enjoyed. And I'm uh, very grateful for being at your conference. I hope to see you again. And maybe someday I'll see you also at our meetups of Leading Time Ladies as well. Welcome. We are virtual, so why yes. not? Right? <laughs> you can go anywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll we'll let that invitation. We'll hear that. We'll let everybody know that they have this invitation. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice summer. You too. Bye.
Bye. Are we off? No, we're off. We're off. We're off. Thank you.